but we're going to be getting rid of some of these guys today. They're already on the website. If you have missed that, I've got a post, but they are all on the, well, my website. Hmm. What's left of them, at least. All posted, 40% off, easy. Jump on the website, no BS. Throw it in your cart, discounts on there, all done. Yeah, well, we'll chill and wait on some people to jump in here and have some fun in the meantime. Actually, I can't have too much fun. The bar's back there. Well, we'll try anyway. Let's see. Ah. Seated is more better, right? Maybe, maybe not. We shall see. Somebody here. Wait, how do I see in the chat? Let's go. Live chat, there we are. Who's popped in here? Got a couple people trickling in now. I can't see what you're saying, though. Anybody that's here, drop a comment down below. Let me know that you're here, and we'll have some fun. We'll try to, anyways. If we don't have fun, maybe we'll at least get some Varnays, right? <laughs> Well, either nobody is typing or I can't see comments below. I don't know which it is. That's not great. I hate these live videos. It's like I can never tell what's going on. But you know what? Let's see. Yeah, supposedly I can see chats, but I don't see them. So I don't know what's up with that. Anyway, we can talk about this guy, right? At least while I wait on a few people to show up. So this guy here, there is, is Varnay's, actually one of their first, the Eco Materials, and now we have nobody. Well, maybe? I don't know. Anyways, the very first, the 2011 with a full 180 degree shield visor. Never order one of those in prescription because it's trash. Been there, done that, have the whole slew of emails between myself and manufacturing in France about how terrible that experience was. But as a regular Plano prescription, well, no prescription, as a regular just everyday sunglass, it's a pretty cool looking piece. Then they've got NXT lenses in most of these, some of them photochromics. The one we have left, the one you actually want, is not. It's just that rainbow mirror over the brown base. Pretty good everyday pair. Nothing too crazy. Let's have fun with it at this point, right? Super simple, super light, easy on the face. Oh, really nice long behind the ears, which you want in the sport wraps. Remember, I think this one, yeah, all of the 180s do come with that actual Varnay strap. So that's an easy one. We're going to play with the sports first because they're the easiest to reach. Then we have the 1811. Last one of these guys with the Eclipse lens. Of course, if I'm gonna have something with full coverage, it's got that Eclipse lens in it. The darkest damn thing you can get out there, right? So this guy, you've got the side shields. Open up, close them down, clip it over, remove it out. If you don't want that fully enclosed look, super easy to wear that way as well. Nothing too crazy. People will get in here and start asking questions. We'll have more fun. I'm just doing this where it's a replayable video later for now. Right? Right. All right. You can see me fumble with these darn things on camera. That's always fun. It helps if you put them in right side up on the correct side and actually pay attention to what you're doing instead of looking up here. Like, who's over there? I'm definitely starting to think I can't see comments because we have somebody in here but I see nothing down here. Look 
got it set up. I'm pretty sure where I can see if something's coming in. So yeah, that's your 1811 in the Eclipse lens, which is just absurdly dark, right? There you go. You can see with the shift of the camera, I can't control it, but you know, we'll get it there. Super dark, super cool. And then this one, you have that little vent at the front. It's funny, even with the bullshit that happened, I still, eh, I like them, okay? And we've got this little vent here in the front for nice airflow through the frame, which if you need full coverage, you know that is extremely important because if you don't have something to let air flow through the frame, what you're gonna have instead is a whole mess of fogged up lenses and nobody really wants that. At least not anybody that's uh, running, cycling, riding, whatever you may be doing, you would want that full coverage for. Now, 1709. Same overall features, a little bit slimmer profiles of the frame. So this guy on right there, super clean, nice medium fit through the bridge. I will say, I don't particularly love this one on me. That's very few frames out there, right? So nice and crisp right through here. Again, a little opening there. This one actually does not come with a block off plate. Weird for these guys, most of them do. The great thing, this one is equipped with the blue Polar Lynx lens, which is great for out on the water, open water, marine water, salt water. Always the combination I recommend for that situation. If you're out on the beaches doing any sort of deep sea activities, highly recommend this guy because you have the mirror from above and below. Well, hello, Chrissy. Which helps protect from the dazzling above and the reflections on the bottom but it's also a polarized lens, so you knock all those reflections down on the water below as well. Good stuff there, no complaints, gets the job done. It's a bad one, you can have a bad day and still like the freaking product, right? Yeah, well, there you go. Now, oh, no, 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 no. This guy, this one. This one I could talk about all day because this is technically a reproduction of a remake that they made and was worn by Daniel Craig in both Skyfall and No Time to Die, I believe. Uh, Skyfall might be the glacier. I'll have to check the fact on that. For the Arctic. Okay, so the Eclipse lens I was just showing, hands down, no question. The glacier glasses up top are much, much better in that situation. A, they're a little bit more rugged and not as prone to brittleness as, you know, you're in the field, uh, you have some idea how the materials work. The ice cold is extremely brittle and hard on the plastics. So those acetates, you know, it's not super likely, but if you get them really, really cold and they do happen to get impacted, you are gonna have a break in that acetate. It's not a good time, not something you wanna run into. These, you do still have acetate, but it is a slight trim with that fully encased stainless. So a little bit tougher overall there, actually. Where is titanium or stainless? Now I don't even remember. Titanium, not stainless. Misquoted you on that. Just happen to remember because mine, I have one of these guys I wear it at the beach because it is not prone to salt water. Yeah, yeah, see, you know all about that cold and the acetates. <laughs> You've been in much colder weather than I ever have. So yeah, for you in particular, I know you have access to a little bit more than some of the others, but definitely something titanium and probably the Hyvex, maybe the polycarbonate lens, just because it's a little bit softer. I'm not exactly sure on that one. We'll have to look that up. I'll let you know on that later. Yeah, I got distracted. There were several reasons this one's actually good in the Arctic. It's not just that the chassis is the titanium with the acetate trim ring. You've also got the glass lenses with a lot of protection, but I would amp this up to the Eclipse lens that I was showing off a minute ago. Extremely dark lens. It is designed for that Arctic environment and is intended for the glaciers, I think it's absolutely bonkers that none of the glacier glasses actually ship from Varnay with the, uh, okay, yeah, I was afraid of that. Those hard coats just can't handle that temperature change. Definitely makes sense. Um, where was I? <laughs> the Eclipse lens, silly, silly dark little thing here, blocks 96 somewhere in that area. It's down to six six to eight percent light transmittance, depending on exactly 
the uh, combination there. The stock glass, I do believe that one was 8% rather than 6%, but some of the prescriptions we've seen it reach down a little bit darker into that 6% range. So you think you've got this full coverage, then you've got that incredible darkness. You know, there is no light getting around in this frame. This one in particular isn't quite as good because you do have basically that gap from the clear trim. So not as great there, but definitely gets the job done. What's really cool with these, the side shields and the little bridge here are suede. Uh, they do vegan leather, leather. They have a few different options depending on the exact frame. This one is a, I believe a real leather suede and not a vegan option. So it keeps your contact down here so you don't have to worry about your skin freezing to the titanium, which you've been in the cold, you know. That's why you probably wear plastic most of the time, right? because you're either gonna have the frigid cold of the metal burning you, basically, or <laughs> breaking plastics. Take your pick, right? It's much easier to replace a plastic frame than it is to uh, replace a nose. <laughs> or skin that you pull off with it, right? <laughs> I knew we were gonna have some fun. <laughs> uh, we ended up in a spill on the glacier, and where was I? You distracted me, Chrissy. It's all your fault. All right. So this guy, hell, I can't even remember their names anymore. They've changed them all so much, and now these aren't even correct names. So this guy is the Varnay 2105. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I believe that for sure. It's just too cold for that. It gets all the way down to the core of the metal. It's like So this guy, the 2105, is the reproduction of the 1613 that was worn in the James Bond films. No Time to Die for sure, Skyfall, I'll have to look and check if that one was actually one of them, but you've got your solid stainless steel chassis. This is why I was stuck on stainless steel. This one is stainless steel. You've got your acetate trim ring with a little bit of side protection. Nothing too crazy, but there is that little divot there. Super cool pair on the face. What's interesting with this one, so this is the original colorway that supposedly was worn in the film. This is the one that all of the, um, what is it, all of the Bond fan sites misquote this as being the colorway from the film, which is the matte gray with the dark black and the dark gray lens. What was actually supplied, at least from my sources at Varnay, however reliable they are or are not at this point, was the 1613, which was the prior generation of the same model. Just very, very subtle changes between that. I've got a video that will be gone eventually, but it's still there for now. And it is in the black with the true silver down through here, but you have the ski links lens on it, which means you have that gradient silver mirror from above and below. You can actually see it in the film. There is that strong reflection from above and below. Now the lighting is different. It's darker on his face, so it looks and appears like the matte gunmetal in the black, but sorry, it's just not. Uh, you can see the freeze frame actually in one of the jet scenes. It's super clear that you've got that mirror on the... <laughs> yes, yes they did. Uh, supposedly with all US accounts. We'll get to that. Uh, yeah. Actually, I don't even think it was U.S. I, I believe that was a worldwide poll, but yeah. Whether they actually followed through and did that or just poking at me, we'll see, right? <laughs> I'm sure I will know soon enough whether that was directed specifically at me. The email was pretty clear that it was everyone, but it would not be like Varnay to mince words. <laughs> yes, it would. Now, this guy, this is the big boy. <laughs> can't remember the model number. They call it Ridge now. I can't remember what it was before. 2101? Yeah, 2101. Super big guy. This is actually, and I'll say this, this is an attempt at a new acetate version of the Zero Three up there, the classic of the dude pair. Incidentally, they are releasing or in the process of releasing a true acetate version of that 03. You will never see that review from me now at this point. I'm sorry. Things have happened, right? <laughs> Not spending my time and money on them anymore. So the 2101 true acetate frame, you've got your solid stainless steel core on these, real five barrel hinges, which is always nice. 
<laughs> Portak, they definitely could. This is a hefty size frame. I actually measured it in its current adjustment. It is 149 millimeters from temple to temple. This is a big boy. It is literally falling off of me. I, I could not wear this one. Now, you know, size wise on my face isn't super bad, but it, it's big. It's a big, big guy. But you can see a lot of the design cues from the O3, right? Pull this guy up here. Very, very similar overall structure. The difference being that you've got that bridge insert on the O3, which is removable, but the overall shape, structure, you know, there's some small design changes. I would not be surprised at all to see the Acetate O3 have more structure like this and just a technical renaming. But what do I know, right? <laughs> so, yeah. Actually, what well, lens is in this? Because we need to go there, right? The pure gray lens. So that's always good. Kind of a green leaning gray. Uh, I believe this one's a 150, sir. It goes way back on me, and I generally wear a 140. So, you know, Farnay does not stamp that on the frame. So let's get a ruler and do it. And in case you're ever wondering how to measure temple length, you start right there where the actual temple is, not forward of that, not behind that. And technically you need to straighten this out to do it right. So let's not half-ass it today, shall we? Yeah, it's a solid 145 there straight. But I will tell you versus most of my 145s, this guy, which is also not stamped because it was made for me. You can see this one much, much cleaner back here. This one, so much more length back here. Now to be fair, it's not bent down right behind my ear. That should be a couple millimeters forward, but we've got so much more length back there that way versus this one. You know, even if we go from that bend, we're still much, much more narrow. So yeah. Plenty, plenty of size to this guy to go around. Take her out to dinner, right? All right, since we've actually got a few people in here now, any specific requests of ones you would like to see up here before we start getting absolutely bonkers and crazy and I don't remember who I am anymore? Now, this guy, you're gonna see why I say this is essentially the direction the Acetato 3s will go I could almost promise you if they made this and that same color in the acetate model, you're not gonna see much of a difference. The fit with this one is much different though, and that's because it is a nylon material on the original Legends. And overall structure, again, very similar. The width is pretty, pretty close, but these fit differently on the face so just from the way these nylon frames have their stock adjustment. There's a lot more grip back here, which gives us a little bit wider range of utility and fitability. This is the signature, the dude frame. I've got it in stock in three colorways still. So we've got this crystalline gray, personally, my favorite, no question. Like it's, it's not super close. It's semi close to my second, but not super close. Uh, yeah. Only semi close, because the one I pulled up here a minute ago, as we were on it, is this guy <laughs> thank you it's a little shaggy today but i'll take it so then there is your matte tortoise which you can't really make up colorway super good in here i don't have i didn't bring my lights down i was originally going to take this all down to the studio and that uh <laughs> that was a silly idea this is much better but yeah so the matte tortoise i call it a close second the upgrade with this one you do have the uh, gray polarized lens, which, let's see which one we've got here. Yeah, this is the more blue. Uh, that's the reason I'm not a huge fan of their gray polarized is their standard pure gray leans a little bit more green, better colors, a little bit richer to wear. This one leans a little bit more blue. You can actually see it even on the camera here. It's not quite as uh, colorful of a punch with that. But generally, I tend to like warmer lenses myself, so, that may not be as big of a punch to you guys. This one here is kind of an oddball, actually. I didn't get into the lens on that. This is their gray links, which is effectively their pure gray. So you've got that more green gray 
and that you can definitely see the difference between those two, right? I mean, it's almost night and day, literally, on the camera. But you get a really good color rendering in this, but you do get that added benefit of that silver mirror at the top and the bottom. Always been a big fan of that. It's one of the reasons I have liked Varnay as long as I have. That in combination with the glass lenses, it's good stuff. You just don't want to work with them. <laughs> All right, so that is our 03. We'll jump next to the other kind of signature Varnay frame. That is the Legend 06. This is not as fun as I had hoped it would be. I should have a whiskey in my hand and I should be complaining about what's happened today. But you know, someone told me I should be nice and wait a little bit longer and see if they give a reply to some of the things that have transpired today. <laughs> Short version of that, right now, while we're here, while we're chatting, is we are no longer a, I uh, mm, guess that's not the correct word. They're not sending us any more frames. However you want to take that. I'll take it my way, you take it yours, we'll figure out what's happening. But we'll have another fun chat another day this week. I promise. If you want to see it, we'll have some fun with that. I'll make sure and bring a bottle of whiskey and we will really have fun with that one. So, the 06, what I am actually going to talk about here. Super classic, this is their signature look from the 60s. Really cool frame, this is the one that pretty well everyone that has ever walked into my store and asked for a Varnay, this is what they have in mind. It is this or the even older signature cat, I guess it was called, which is sort of a blend of this and the O2, but much smaller. I used to have one around here somewhere. Super cool looking frame. But it was just a very soft version of this, where this one's a little bit more edgy, you got a little bit more catty flair to it, really nice cut to it overall good stuff. Nothing too particularly crazy. This is their nylon frame, so it's got a little bit of that squeezy wrap to it I was talking about. Not super adjustable, but gets the job done. This one is equipped with my favorite lens they make. My favorite lens might not be yours, but the Ski Links lens I am a big time fan of because it is that yellow, darker, warm, they call it a yellow green, so you get a nice rich color enhancement super super crisp to look out through in the fall it makes those colors really really pop is it a bad idea to add an ar coating on front and back side of sunglasses what would happen if you put an ar on the front so no it's not a bad idea it really depends on your uses and what you're looking for if you're doing a custom prescription lens uh, the hyper ropes i will generally avoid it that means if your prescription has a plus in the front of it um, those lenses tend to run lighter because the way passes, uh, light passes through the plus lens. It's like a light collector and it focuses it all really tight. The minus lenses kind of make the light rays diverge after they pass through the lens. So it's naturally going to appear darker. On a myope lens or a lens where we want to make it look a little bit cleaner and crisper from the front, we will use an AR coating, in particular our non-selective AR color coating. Uh, it just makes a crisper look to the lenses, in my opinion. It looks more like a true glass lens in a case we might not be able to use glass. Just, it, it's not bad, but it does make the lenses transmit more light. So if you're looking for that super, super, super dark pair, say you want something like the Varnay Eclipse, you would not want to do an AR on the front side on that. Uh, it's just going to really reduce that ability to make it darker. First of all, you're reducing the tint when you go to cut it for AR, not to cut it for AR, but when you go to send it to AR, uh, part of that prep process is going to bleach a little bit of that tint and filter out. So, mm, yeah, it, it, I prefer it. My own glasses, if you've been around long enough, you've seen my Porsche designs, uh, the black lens I have in those does have an AR on the front side instead of the brown pair that has the blue mirror that I generally wear. So, yeah, yeah, all day long. Do it all the time. I absolutely love it. I get great feedback from customers. Good, good stuff. Uh, mirror, so no, uh, it's not optional with a mirror coating. You cannot do an AR stack on top of a mirrored lens. Uh, the mirror by nature is very similar to an AR stack already. And OptiCode in particular, one of the ones we use, will do a super 
hydrophobic and oleophobic coating on top of that. You know, it makes it resist scratches a little bit better, a little bit easier to clean. Nothing too crazy there, but think of the mirror as a different version of an anti-reflective coating already. Uh, that will make the lens darker rather than the AR coatings making it a little bit lighter. You do lose some darkness to that bleaching process I mentioned before, but the mirror is going to block on average between 10 and 20% more light than you already have. Uh, there's some more intense mirrors that block a little bit more than that. Just by their nature, they're going to reflect away the color that is coming into the lenses. So, like these, where it's a silver mirror, it's going to reflect most of the things away. Did that answer your question? Or did I just make it even worse? <laughs> I hope I didn't make it worse. I have made your gears spin. Okay, well. <laughs> okay, I actually am having a little bit of fun, even without the whiskey and the tea time and such. So the difference between these guys, you've got the black with the ski links lens, which as I mentioned, huge fan of, love it. Excellent, so glad that helped you future. Uh, this is their yeah, they call it their signature color. I'm not a huge fan of it. Uh, yeah, just not a fan. It's their brown fade with the brown Lynx lens, which I do like the lens in it. I just don't like the shine of this lens or this color in particular. And with this color combination, to me, it looks cheap. And these are not cheap. They, these guys, normally you're talking like 260, 280, almost $300 and it looks like you got it out of the gas station. Not for me, guys, I'm sorry. Now, that said, I do have a couple of those over there because it's super popular. Again, not for me. And we also have the O3 in that same colorway. I did not mention that one earlier. Again, same reason, not a huge fan. It lives in the drawer right back here. There you go. That's the one that uh, the Big Lebowski wore, actually. The dude, right? The dude shades. This is, again, per Barnet, what was supplied in the film. Doesn't look like it with that in. You knock your little centerpiece out, and there you go. Now you're the Lebowski. Well, I'm not. You are. You are. Whoever you is, is our. You are the Lebowski. The dude. Now, what else do we have hiding in here? I'm trying to go through these in a nice little uniform order. If you have any questions, definitely drop them below. I'm happy to answer questions while we're here, kind of hanging out, running through these frames. Next, we're going to get to this little trio. They're a nice, fun one to knock out all together there. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Just making sure I didn't miss any messages while I was turned around. Okay, cool. Didn't miss anything. I wish it would stay up there, but if I don't touch it for a minute, all of the chat boxes goes away, so I'm sorry if I keep touching that. This guy here, the Legend 02. Unfortunately, this first offer, last offer, I am very sad to not be able to actually go through and sell a ton of these. This one is legendary status, okay? We'll get to that in a minute. I would have loved to have done the video review on it, but alas, here we are. The Legend O2. This is what started Varney. This is the pair that Sean Poyo, the optician, created and gave to Jean Varney, the skier that won the Winter Olympics in the 60s. This is the one. That's the one you have to own. This one, this one. Just remember, it's this one, okay? But the 02 is the frame. Still made today, still available. In this case, with that signature Ski Links lens that I have already mentioned I love. If you haven't been around here long enough, I love this lens. Beautiful, warm, bright, pretty, nice colors. Now, don't forget, in case you haven't stuck around long enough, you get a discount on these on the website right now. No code needed, just go, add it to your cart, check out, and you'll see what we're up to. Now this one, the black and ski links. Pretty cool looking frame, nice cut through here. Where's, I'm gonna give it a small to maybe, maybe a medium as a stretch. 
just because you can see here, we do have a pretty steep arc to it. Some of that's the adjustment of this frame. It is wrapped a little bit more than some of the others I've seen come through. But yeah, I mean, it fits pretty well on me. I just don't generally like to see that pressure start here and going back. I generally like it to land in here. It's just a personal thing. Uh, <laughs> observed a tribute of well-fitting glasses. Okay, yes, definitely. This guy, this beauty right here, she is the one. This is your little red hot stunner that you wanna take out, you're driving the Ferrari, you're going out to a nice dinner, you've got your little pretty thing sitting next to you, whatever your flavor is. This is the one. This is the colorway that John Varney wore, has been missing from the Varney collection for decades. I have not seen the red frame in, okay, well, in the time I've had an account with them, four years, they have not offered the Zero Two in a red. Don't know the story there, don't care. But now it is back in a real acetate. So it's even better than the original. You know I love acetate, great material, <laughs> unless you're in the Arctic in sub-zero temperatures, in which case I feel sorry for you on a whole bunch of different levels. And of course, she's still hanging around here. She's over there shivering, pretending that she's nice and warm anyway. This is a good one. I'm sad. I really hope one of you picks this one up and loves it and enjoys it because she's spicy. She is spicy, spicy. Now, that brings us to another one of ours and uh, yeah, so just real quick, before we pull this next frame out, I said this was our O2 acetate. I said this frame is where we're gonna go. This is what our O2 acetate is gonna look like before an O2 acetate even existed. Here was the O2 nylon, here's the O2 acetate. You'll see there are some very, very subtle design tweaks just for the nature of the way acetate's made, right? We get a little bit more width right through here. So this next frame, keep that in mind because this is the newer, new-ish. Not as new as the O2 acetate, but newer-ish. Hmm, newer-ish. So this is the 2007. This was released about a year or so ago. Still a current model in the collection, mind you. It's not dead stock sitting here. Now notice the fit. Very, very similar fit and structure when we switch between this and the O2. Feels the same on the face. Looks overall the same. The difference is we've got that little gold trim notch there. I knew this was coming. I knew they were working on an O2 acetate. They never tell us these things. I can just see what's going on behind based on what they're putting out, okay? It's not that hard. <sighs> so this is the 2004. This was our precursor to the O2 acetate. Interesting enough, they still make both but this guy is the one. It's beautiful, beautiful classic lines, of course, based on the O2, it's gonna have classic lines. You've got your little signature V there, nothing too crazy. Pure brown lens, yep, non-polarized, nice dark brown lens. Medium guy, kinda cool. You wanna flit your hair and run with it. You can scrub the beard a little bit, whatever you're gonna do. Slick pair of sunglasses, okay? Nothing special, nothing too crazy. Just a pretty acetate frame. That's gonna run out the O2s. You guys better get hopping on here. We got one, one, two people. We, we got some crazy deals on these. I'm answering any questions you've got. Whoever's there needs to go grab some people. Y'all need to have some more fun with this. We'll have some more fun next time too. Now, so we did this guy. You know, I just realized I'm naming these out by the numbers and you can't even go to their website and find them by the numbers. Lucky for you, they're still on my website in the numbers. <laughs> I hope you enjoy that. So this guy is your uh, Edge Small, I think they're calling it. Hell, I don't know. I don't even have the names memorized. They changed this three weeks ago. This is that guy. Whatever. This is the small 1613 revised new version. <laughs> so this was the revised of the 1613. This is the revised of the smaller version of the 1613 Edge Open. That's what it was. All right, so this is your 2108. Really nice, cool, soft, kind of a bronzy. I think they call it rose gold. I don't know what they call it, but just kind of a nice, cool appearance to it. Just soft, 
Nice color metal to it. Punch of white to it, so it pops a little bit more. I always love a little color pop. This one, this is one of those frames really just isn't for me. It's a little bit too small, but a good, good frame on a more petite face. Definitely something worth, worth looking at, at least, right? Yeah, we still got some battery there. Sorry, it's been a long day. Between these two, yeah, it's that one. All day long. I don't have much to say about this one, obviously, right? If you missed it, rewind. <laughs> you can't rewind, it's live. You can rewind later. You can rewind later. You can see about the incredible 2110, 2108, 2106. God, it's the numbers. I don't know, I don't love the numbers. And this little girl right here, she's kind of a fun one. This is your sexy little cat eye, the 2002. You put her on when you're going out for a party. This one in the champagne colorway. I got a couple of these left, actually. Two, two of those left. Not a bad, spicy little frame for a night out, right? This is, you don't want a super standout pair. I said a night out with sunglasses. You heard me. You did not mishear that. But yeah. Just kind of a nice, clean, pretty cat eye. Pure brown lenses in this one? Yeah. Vernet has recently made it available with the polarized brown. I don't have it. Sorry. So, if you want it with the brown polarized lens, you get it from them. If you want this one for a lot less, you know where to go. Jump the link, hit the website, click the buttons, see what you got whole lot less. They all have their fun. I'll have my fun. My fun's just better for you. This one. This is the last one. I think it's the last one. Yeah. Everything's laying up there flat. <laughs> so, if you're just catching up, just joining in, uh, you want to see any of those other ones again? I'll be happy to pull them back out. This guy is the 2-1... No, it's not even a 2-1. This is before that. We were just super happy to get these back in because it was kind of the first launch of the ski Lynx lens... Or the Night Lynx... <laughs> God! The Night Lynx lens. See, you would think I'm different live than I am on the pre-recorded videos. No, it's the exact same thing. You get the exact same person. I don't cut it. This is what you get. Sorry. So the night... <sighs> yes. The Night Lynx lens. Really cool lens. If you're a gamer, this is the one for you. It is going to block 99% of the blue light. Great, great, great utility here. It's going to enhance contrast in low light situations. I love these on foggy, hazy, rainy days. And this frame is none too shabby. It's a very classic silhouette. Very unisex, neutral, easy to wear. I'm uh, not a super big fan of how it fits on the bridge, at least on me. I have a little bit wider nose. It's not so great. But nothing too crazy. Yeah. Little yellow lens. Good stuff. I, I do love their Not Lynx lens, and I will absolutely pull out that this is the first pair that made me really look into Varnay and consider bringing them into the store. This is actually one of the collections we opened the store with. This is, Varnay was the very first true sunglasses collection I offered in the store. Decided last minute on a whim, ah, right, cool, we're gonna throw these in, we're gonna see how it goes. I literally put in and received my opening order the day before grand opening day. Three years later, Sorry, see ya. Cool story. Like I said, we'll get to that story another time. I'm gonna be slightly nice today, or try to. <laughs> we'll get back to that, okay? We'll get back to why all of these are being discounted and why I am not uh, super savvy about that side of things, but I still love the product. Great frames, always has been. I will still say that after the last one is sold. They make a great product. Now, if that changes, well, I won't know because I won't have them anymore. <laughs> All right. 
we've been at this about 40 minutes now. This is getting a little intense for anybody to rewatch. So, the couple people here. Anything from the Varnay collection you would like to see? Any questions you have about optics in general? Have at it. Drop that comment down below, and I'll get you. Or I'll blabber for 30 minutes and make you wish you'd never ask a question. Either way, I'll answer. I feel like I should have some Jeopardy music playing, but I know that absolutely would break like all the YouTube rules. They like shadow ban me. I'll never see me again. Who are you? I don't know. Just the guy with the glasses and the stuff. Like, ooh. Aw. Where was that for the last 40 minutes? Oh, that makes the colors look much better. Yeah, that's probably not true to color anyway. Oh, this says we've got a couple people in here. You guys need to break the silence. Let me see some comments below. What are you thinking? What are you looking at? What are you doing tonight? What's for dinner? I haven't had dinner yet. I need some inspiration. That's where I'm at today. I haven't eaten since 7 o'clock. 8 o'clock? <laughs> yeah, yeah, 8 o'clock. Turkey sausage. Every breakfast. Mint. Sometimes eggs. Yeah, rambling. There you go. Where's all my people at? Oh, there we go. Two people? Come on now. I can't flip to another screen, so I can't do anything about it. But you know what I can do? I can walk over here. Ooh. Huh. Well, I'm not the only one that's uh, sick of the Varnay soup, so to speak. Let me run over here and grab my little laptop. Let's see what we can play with. I am depending on you guys, though. I really do need some inspiration for dinner. Oh, that sounds good. I'm not big on chains, obviously. I like the smaller companies. You know what? What is it? We got two people. You drop a comment. Let me know. If it sounds good for dinner, I got a pair of glasses with your name on it. We'll figure this out. Man, you guys won't even tell me what's for dinner for a free pair of glasses. Jesus. Well, that's how that goes. Y'all let me down on this one. I don't know who's still hanging out there, but you let me down. We got, this, this day's going like I got a, a old can of citrus venom over here and I need some water. And that's what I got. Oh, there we go. Now I can make the comments pop up that way. Somebody's lurking here. I see. It says one person's here. I don't hear nothing. I don't see nothing. We got no comments. But we got a person in here. Let me see what I can round up. Let's round some people up and have some real fun. I'd love to tell you that was whiskey or something stronger. It's not. I said I'd go home after this. <laughs> ah. All right. Let's see if we can get some invites going on over here. We got YouTube. We got... Ah, there, that's good. Da, 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 da. And... That's a weird angle. You can't see my computer, but it's there. Okay. Revo sale starts next week, so if you're hanging out for the Varnay stuff, we'll have some more on the Revo next week. I'm not big on sales, y'all, at all. It, it's got to be a real good reason to drop a price on something. 
because I am pre-screening and pre-touching and pre-fitting everything that comes through here to make sure you get something really, really good. I know that's lost on a lot of people, but it is what it is. It's a little extra effort. It goes a long way. I just feel better doing it that way. Let's see. How do I find my own upload videos? I can click go live on my computer while I'm live on my phone. That just seems wrong. Yeah, somebody else joined here. Who's in here? I got two people now. <laughs> I'm so not loved. You know, I say that. I actually, I, I went trick or treating as myself and got recognized. <laughs> I guess my neighbors should know me though, right? At least in the same neighborhood. All right, there it is. There's the live video. Go to community tab. Let's see. All right. Oh, pushing all the buttons. Last time, still nothing down there. Y'all are letting me down. I want to copy link. I don't want to share it on YouTube. It's the green glasses. <laughs> Janet, yes. Yeah, I, I can't hide in the green glasses. I was even wearing a black shirt with like four different pairs of glasses and all different colors on it. There's no hiding ever. Community channel, so that's all I'm looking for. We got this go live thing down here. I'm trying to figure out how I can share it outside of YouTube on my computer. Apparently easier said than done. You came here from the uh, Facebook link, didn't you? Yeah. That's right. Okay. Let's see. Oh, that's not even the right post. No recording. There it is. Uh, oh, that's really awkward. I can watch me. Watch me. There's a delay. There's like a... <laughs> there's a half second delay there. It really looks like I am just tapping away on my leg over here, doesn't it? Jesus, that's terrible. I'm the third person. I'm the live person. But now I can look and I can see all the comments without having to touch the screen. So we're on to something. Oh, and I can reply in comments. This is the way to do it. So we got this. I got this. That's me now. All right, cool. Now I can type and reply to questions. Ooh, got to mute that audio though. Jesus. Get a little feedback loop here. That wouldn't be fun. All right, now we've got a live watch link. Come on. Let's go on with it. I can type without looking. All right, do me a favor if you're here. I just dropped the link directly to this live in the comments. Let's get that out there. Let's have some fun. At the very least, they can watch the recorded version of this later. I'll go by the Varnay stuff. We got a couple cool questions answered. Good, good stuff, definitely. Talked about some AR, talked about some sizes. We had some fun on the ice cold Arctic and what to look for in glasses there. 
but you know, maybe I need to go to the Arctic. Maybe I need to take some pairs of glasses to the Arctic and torture test them. The problem is, I wouldn't want to torture test me. I hate the cold. I am not built for the cold. Ooh, that's kind of laggy. Start moving a lot. No, oh, yeah. No, no, it was just that one second. Okay, well. Anyway. Da, 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 da. All right. Well, I got some good footage in at least. It touched every Varnay I have in the store. It only took me 45 minutes to do it. <laughs> Oh, good times, good, good times. Let's see. Oh, we had so much fun today. That's how I feel today. <laughs> Let's see. I'm going to pop over here. Did I miss anything? I didn't miss anything. Who joined us here? We got a new person? Or is it the same old people? <laughs> not, not the same old people saying that you're old or not the same old people as in the people that have been here the whole time. Oh, this is me on a live pretending like I am uh, having a good time. I am having a good time. I definitely had fun for the first 40 minutes. Now we're getting kind of, what's going on? I don't know. Who watching you know I wish it told me usernames hot girls for me aha sweet where what a strange chat oh well that's interesting oh it filtered it out because I didn't do the live chat there we go now I can see everything oh I guess there are no hot girls for me it's all spam too bad Oh, wait. Why is the video frozen over here? Oh, I froze it. There we go. That's what happened. Yeah, well, for whoever's still hanging out here, maybe it's this uh, hot girls for you commenter. <laughs> That'd be why I didn't get nothing. All right. Somebody needs to join me and get in here so we can have some fun. I'm down to, oh, yeah, yep. Yep, that's it. That's just me. Cool. Alright, well. Uh, it is almost 7 o'clock. I may be halfway ready to wrap this up. See if uh, got a few people popping in here again. Got anybody uh, 
has any questions or comments or you want to tell me I am absolutely crazy and have lost my mind, which is probably accurate on many levels. You know what? Uh, we'll mute that there. There we go. There we go. All right. I'm going to take this little bug out of my ear because we don't need that. Ha. Huh. Oh, now I can hear. We got a few people in here now. Let me just drop a comment down there. Let's see who we got here. I've sent a few invites. Let's see who really shows up. <laughs> So remember, I can see you down here too. I got this is not me playing with my knee. This is actually my computer. So I can reply to comments on the screen instead of having to touch and interrupt and you know, well, I'll still reply verbally too, but yeah. You know what I really need is some dinner inspiration. I have not eaten in 12 hours. 10 hours, something. I don't even know what time it is anymore. What do we got here? We got a few. Who's jumping on here? Nobody's talking. We got people, but we got nobody talking. Somebody talk to me. I ran through this whole Varnay collection, so if there's anything you want to see, let me know in the comments. I'll pull it back out. Any questions about lens technology, any questions about frame fit, uh, we'll have fun with it. We'll do it right. I'll throw these across the room for you. I'm just kidding. I won't throw these across the room for anybody. Maybe a few people. Maybe a few people. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm going to try and do more of these lives, too. I, I kind of enjoy it, because I can ramble like a psychopath, and nobody cares, because nobody is going to see it later. I said, dude, these all rewind. Don't they? Right? After I click it, it's gone. It's not gone. It processes and loads all over again. Oh, that could be fun. Dangerous. Dangerously fun. Let's see. Nope. All right, we're gonna call this right around an hour. I'm gonna give it a few more minutes. We'll see if some people wanna jump in and chat here or uh, if we're gonna call it or not. So I really do need to eat before I just pass out on the floor over here. I've done that once, actually. Ah, uh, <laughs> I don't recommend it. The floor is hard. It is cold. I was not there for very long. I didn't actually pass out. I was sick. I felt like hell. I just laid down. You got nobody? Come on, y'all. I know we got, like, what? Hell, we got almost 6,000 subscribers. I got three people in here. I don't know where everybody's at. Bad time of day, maybe? It's Monday. I know you ain't doing anything. I'm calling it a night. <laughs> I'm probably not far behind you. Uh, I may give it till 7 o'clock here, see if everybody wakes up, but... Yep. Dinner's calling my name soon. Have a good night, Janet.
There we go. Now we got a pin message in the live too. There we go. Now you all take that link and share it and make things happen. I didn't know I could do that. I'm still learning. Are we gonna learn it one way or another? Let's see. Not a single one. I will never trust you all again. Oh, somebody. We get oh, hey, Martin. And 2K, actually searching how to loosen glasses and found out that I was live. <laughs> well, I'm glad that worked out for you. So definitely watch the video on how to loosen overly tight glasses because it goes into way more detail than I will do over here. Martin over in the UK, I hope you're having a great uh, hell of a time as it over there. It's near middle of the day for you, so enjoy your lunch. Um, yeah, so loosening glasses that are overly tight uh, for you, 2K, are we talking tight like it hurts here or back here? Or is it, uh, you know, just they're like sucked up against your face, hurts behind the ears, like right at that top edge? Or is it more like deep pressing in pressure hurt? Like what, what are we trying to fix here? And I will definitely give you some quick tips to get that feeling at least a little better for now. And now that I have uh, <laughs> successfully closed my computer and sat it over there, and I can't type. <laughs> Hurts right above. I'm testing today, nothing changed. Not even one trying. Oh, come on, Martin. There is always an excuse for new glasses, and that's just finding a new frame you love. Hell, I think the happiest I ever was when I went to the eye doctor not about a year after opening the store, and he said, cool, no change. I said, cool, I can get 10 new pairs because I don't have to change the other 10 I've got. Uh, <laughs> good times there. So for you 2K, uh, hurting around behind the top of the ears, that is generally over tightened behind the ear for sure. Um, so right above kind of a pushing in type pain. So you can see on mine, generally you want that to have a nice arc to follow the curvature of the head. Odds are that arc is a little bit too tight and starts a little bit too soon. The way you would see that is if when you're wearing the glasses back here by the ear, if it's pushing out more and not really making contact till further back in this area, that's pushed in too much behind the ears. It uh, could be that it's turned down a little bit too early, and when I say it's turned down a little bit too early, you can see a little bit, this is the reason I say watch the video, um, you can see a little bit right here, that arc starts right there with the ear line. That's generally what you want for the glasses to stay up and not fall off, but you also want that pressure to spread and kind of start making contact with the head from here the rest of the way back. So it's spreading that pressure out over a nice large area. Uh, you want that to work and That'll keep your glasses from slipping off, but also keep them from hurting. I've got a few frames around here, actually, so let me grab one real quick if you're not in too much of a jump that uh, do have more of that inward pressure. Yeah, here we go. So this is a really good example. Uh, this is frame I actually need to open up and stretch out anyways, so lucky for you. You get to see me do this show live. I don't think anybody's ever seen that. 
<laughs> unless they were here. So this guy here, you can see that is super, super tight back there. Exactly, Martin. Always more choices, man. You know better. Yeah, 2K. So right here, you can see on this frame that pressure doesn't really kick in till like more back here. You can see it's almost pushing itself out, but it's making a ton of contact right back here. You can see it's squeezing in back here super, super hard. And I can feel that pressure on this frame from here pretty well the rest of the way back. This is one, if I was going to wear it, it's way, way off. And this frame is generally meant to be larger than average anyways. So you see what you would do in that case is say you have a plastic frame like this, you would want to heat up all through here. And speaking of videos, I've got another video on that. So let's turn on the little heater over here. Mine is not quite a hair dryer. They will do the job. Mine is a fancy, super expensive hair dryer. There we go. There we go. Super expensive, fancy hair dryer over here hidden behind boxes. There you go. That guy's where some of the magic happens. You're gonna heat up more in this part of the frame, right through here. And you're going to take, and you're going to open that up just ever so gently, you know, where it starts to get thinner through here, if it's a plastic frame. If it's a metal frame, oh, I'll grab one of those. I'll show you how to do that too. But just very gently and easily, give it a little bit of pressure through there, just slowly working with the fingers. And you can see, I'm not super bowing that out hard or anything. But this work on plastic frames without having a metal bar in it. Oh. My friend, I am sorry. Uh, no, uh, those, generally they're gonna be nylons. There's very little adjustability to a nylon frame. Could also be a cheaper injection plastic frame. I've seen that on occasion as well. They don't really lend themselves well to adjustments. They will sort of semi-adjust themselves over time as you wear them, as that material ages and stretches. Uh, but let's get one of the Varnays, for example, here. So you can't see it, but there is not a core wire. Come on. Yeah, here we go. You can see it on this one. So <laughs> this guy, you can see there's no core wire there. This is just an injection plastic uh, nylon in this case, which is a little bit better than a, the cheaper nylon injection materials. Uh, the cheaper injection plastics, the nylon is better than those. But you can see, no core wire. Uh, it, now, I will say, if you have a higher end frame and there is no core wire, and if you see Kirk and Kirk anywhere on that frame, that is an acrylic. Do not adjust that yourself. You will snap it like a twig. Uh, take that back wherever you got it, if that's the case. Let's make sure and cover that. Also, there's another material known as Optil, which would not have a core wire in it. I've very rarely seen that anymore today, so a lot of vintage frames have it. Uh, Gucci also has it in a few of their models currently, too, but not super, super common today as what it has been in the past. Let's see. So... With the nylon frames like this one, uh, again, you're not gonna get a ton of adjustment out of it, but you can do kind of that same thing I was talking about. Except in this case, instead of gently working it, you really wanna overextend that, and you wanna hold it there for a minute. Kind of not like you're trying to break it, but you wanna bend it way past where you want it, hold it a beat, and let go. And you'll see, you know, very, very minimal. It's opened up a little bit more, but it's not much. You know, you can do the same thing, just bend the ever-living piss out of it and you'll get a little bit more back in. It's really, really subtle adjustments with these. Uh, that's gonna be true for the plastic injections or this. Sometimes if you're really fortunate and it's one of the injection plastics, you can heat the ever-living piss out of it and get it somewhere, but odds are you're gonna melt the frame first. So, unfortunately, not great news for you. I, I wish I had a better answer, but yeah, that's... That's the unfortunate truth to those frames without a core. Uh, I'll say there's one other I've seen is a TR90 material. Generally, you're not, you're not going to be able to adjust that too much either. Uh, the better TR90 frames will be TR90 to here, and then you'll have an adjustable metal core the rest of the way back. So It's unfortunate, but I far prefer to be honest and let you know that. Instead of telling you, ah, just bend it, it'll be fine. It won't be fine. Something will break. 
and nobody's gonna be happy or nothing's gonna happen and you'll still be slightly irritated. <laughs> Ah, you are very welcome. Happy to have you here. Glad you popped on and happened to catch me at a time while I was just sitting here at the chop, chilling, playing with some frames, hanging out. I'll try to do this again more. It's been fun. I've got an all over peoples that I love, but it's become quite dull. Is there anything I can do at home to bring it back to life? Martin, you know better than that. I should crucify you for that comment. <sighs> at home, no. I have seen people try to fix frames at home. I've had them shipped to me to fix afterwards. How's that for an answer? <laughs> you, I know you have access to a polished wheel. Surely, you have to, right? Maybe not, but yeah. No, at home, I really don't recommend it. The few I've seen, you know, people will try either rubbing the frames in oil I've seen all kinds of recommendations in the comment section on my video on how to polish a frame. I would not recommend a single one of them because half of those people end up reaching out to me on how to actually fix the frame. Uh, and trying to repolish those frames after some of these fixes, especially the oil soaked one. Oh, it's awful, man. I, I, I end up spending way more time in them than I ever charged for because I feel bad. It's not great, not great at all. Normally I can take a slightly oxidized or a not quite shiny frame. Hell, any frame that comes in here for new lenses, I'll run it under the polish and two, three minutes, maybe five for a little bit heavier oxidation. Some of the frames that have been fixed just from light oxidation, well, first you gotta work through whatever they put on it to fix it, figure out what that is, get it out or off of the frame and then you've got the part of the material that's been ruined that now needs removed. And then you've got to polish after you get that done. So it adds a lot more steps and complexity. Don't, don't do it. <laughs> that's my advice on that one. <laughs> Let's see. Da, 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 da. Da, 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 da. <laughs> hey, listen, there's nothing wrong with a good, well-aged frame and a nice natural patina to it. Always like that. I'm a huge fan of it, especially some of these really cool frames. There's some frames that look better with a natural patina than they did when they came out of the factories. Probably more true today than I would like to admit, but it's the way it is, right? Martin, since you're here, you're playing from the UK. What, uh... Let's see, a leisure society isn't really UK. You know what? I don't really have anything from the UK anymore. I used to have some sick stuff from the UK, man. I used to have some beautiful, all the Seville Row collection. I don't even carry Seville Row anymore. Well, I do. I've got, okay, look. The archives. The archives. The that glasses guy. Vault, so to speak. I have some beauties hiding in there from Seville Row. These aren't for sale. But this, this is their OG stuff. This is vintage 40s acetate, restored, repolished, recut into a brand new frame, one of their classic styles. Man, even you don't. Oh, okay, that's fair. <laughs> that's fair. They're Pretty pricey frames over here. I'm not sure what they are on your side of the pond, but uh, I guess they're pretty pricey over there too, because we've got what? We've got Tom Davies. That's pretty much it. I, I, right offhand, I don't know of anything else that's made in London or the UK anymore. The Seville Row's gone. Uh, that was really the only two I knew of before that, so it's not like there were a ton. Yeah. Listen, there's a reason these are in the uh, vault collection, okay? And not for sale. Part of it's because I like them, and part of it's, oh, okay, see? And uh, there's another one, Cutler & Gross, I think. They're a UK base. Yeah, there's, there's other UK companies. And they're around. But yeah, I've still got several of the old Seville Rose that are the true 18 karat rolled gold vintage stock. God, I love them. 
they're not going anywhere. I'll sell those when I retire or put lenses in them. <laughs> All right. Well, we're going on about 80, 85 minutes here. Yeah. I need to sell a kidney to buy a cutler and gross. I didn't realize they were that expensive over there. They're uh, over here. That's kind of a, I don't want to say inexpensive, but compared to some of this stuff, they're, what is it in the USD? I think the last time I looked at cutler and gross, I think they were around two, 300 US. Yeah, something like that. Anyway, uh, my phone's flashing at me now. It's saying we're down into the low battery range. So that's going to be it for me tonight. I got to go get some food in me and apparently some food in my phone. And between the two of us, we'll get it figured out. I'm glad you could join us for a little while, Martin. Definitely great seeing you. Always appreciate you seeing uh, commenting on the channel. Good stuff. But I'll catch you next time. I hope you have a great afternoon. You'll have to let me know if I got that right or wrong. Just hit the comments afterwards. I'll see it at some point. You guys take care. We'll catch up next time. No, I don't even know how to end it. Thank you. I, I will uh, try to enjoy my dinner, I hope. Dinner and whiskey tonight, for sure. <laughs> it's one of those days. I'll catch you guys next time.